Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Judges Chapter 1, here we are. The long awaited book, I guess, maybe, hopefully. Let's get into it, shall we? In the first chapter, what we see is Joshua's dead, Caleb's not. Those are the two guys out of the 12 spies. Those are the two spies out of all the 12 spies out of Israel that said, We can go into the land. So Joshua and Caleb lived to see it. Joshua was the leader. He died. And it never says in this one that Caleb is like a clearly defined leader. It just says that they go about taking more, uh, you know, killing more people, taking possession of more land, and then failing to take some other land. I went in, I talked about that. I said this is upcoming, so I want to go ahead and dig into that a little bit tonight. And I'm just going to kind of like pick verses here and there. Feel free to read the whole chapter, get your context, make sure I'm saying my stuff right. You know, so it's all chapter one. I'm going to start with verse. 19. So the Lord was with Judah, and they drove out the mountaineers, but they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland because they had chariots of iron. And then you go down to verse 27. However, Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and its villages, or Tanakh and its villages, or the inhabitants of Dor and its villages, or the inhabitants of Iblim and its villages, blah, blah, blah. Down to verse 28, and it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites under tribute, but did not completely drive them out. Verse 29, nor did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gezer. So the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Verse 30, nor did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitron or the inhabitants of Nehalal. So the Canaanites dwelt among them and were put under tribute. And then jump down. To verse 34, And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountains, for they would not allow them to come down to the valley. And the Amorites were determined to dwell in Mount Herez, in Ajalon, and in Shalbim. Yet when the strength of the house of Joseph became greater, they were put under tribute. And so, so I could have read like half that chapter to get the point across. Various, various tribes of Israel couldn't drive out various inhabitants of Canaan for various reasons. And there were various consequences afterwards. Each story was different. Each story was unique. The one thing they had, all had in common, all of them left people in the land that God told them to kill. They left things in the land that God wanted gone. Now again, we're not killing people nowadays in the New Testament. And our promised land isn't a physical plot of land. We have a land in the heavenlies with Jesus Christ as our Lord and High Priest. So, we're not trying to conquer anything here on earth, not physically, not politically. <clears throat> it's good to see God's laws in effect, but that's another sermon for another time. That's not the main drive. The main drive is spiritual and spiritually focused in New Testament times. But there are things that dwell in our promised land, the area that God wants us to be in, that should not be there, that are sinful, that are against Him. And as Christians, we are to drive those things out of our lives, out of our promised lands, out of the areas where God's given us a sphere of influence, we are to fight against those things. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it looks like the Israelites were just lazy, like, well, they didn't get rid of them. Sometimes they put them under tribute, but didn't get rid of them. Sometimes the people were very strong. They either had chariots of iron, or they actually drove a certain tribe out of a certain area for a time. Sometimes it's kind of like, yeah, the enemy was simply stronger than they were. Now, all of that to say, that doesn't excuse them because this is the God who got them as slaves out of the most powerful nation on the world at that time. So if something was lacking or something was missed, it's not that the God of Israel was incapable of doing it. It's that the Israelites did not properly follow their God. Therefore, he did not give them his strength to overcome those obstacles. Obviously, chariots of iron aren't a big deal for a god who can rain down fire mixed with hail from the sky, split a sea, open up the earth and swallow people alive, kill all the firstborn, on and on and on and on and on. Something was missing and lacking in the children of Israel and as the church. When there's something in our promised land, God will do his part, but we need to do our part, believe in him to do his part, and do our part to work and to fight and to drive out those things from our lives 
and from our promised land, whatever sphere of influence that the Lord's given us, we need to fight against those things which the Lord would have us fight. We can't be weak. We can't back down. We can't give in. We need to fight, even if it's hard, even if it's tiring, even if it's troublesome, even if it hurts. Sometimes there are many people, many Christians in this world, who give their lives for my God and my Savior, Jesus Christ, on a daily basis. And all I can do is look up to those heroes and say, you guys are awesome. And one day, we get a chance to meet them all. And until then, thank you guys very much for watching. Drive out those things in your life. Drive out those things from your promised land. Don't let them stand between you and what the Lord has for you. I love you guys. God bless.